welcome back to Dumbrate. Today we're going to be taking a look at two double replacement reactions, um, which is kind of getting to be the usual, well, this and ridiculously stupid things. Um, we're going to be taking some uh, copper hydroxide and adding copper or um, hydrochloric acid to it, which precipitates, or rather, produces this very, very green fluid called uh, copper chloride. Um, well, it's a, it's a solution with copper chloride in it. Um, in order to get to that point, though, first we're going to take some sodium hydroxide and add it to copper uh, sulfate so we can get copper hydroxide. Um, it's, it should be a pretty colorful, fun-looking reaction. Um, and then we're going to probably follow up on that and do a cute few things with uh, copper chloride because copper chloride is a fun compound. So, yeah, we'll get right to it. Step one is clean your workspace because this is not supposed to be on... Right, so first you need some copper sulfate. Um, we got hydrochloric acid uh, for later reaction. Here's the finished product, uh, copper chloride. There. Um, now we need to take our copper sulfate and we need to get a little bit of uh, sodium hydroxide. So I've got some sodium hydroxide in this jar here because what better way is there to store it than in a giant jar? Okay, so I've got two vessels here, um, one for sodium hydroxide, so it's labeled as such, and then one is just half a water bottle that I'm going to filter the um, hydroxide uh, into. I made a very concentrated, uh, I made a basically super concentrated stuff here uh, of sodium hydroxide, so I got some of it there. And then I'll just put it in there. Copper sulfate. Open that right up. Now this one I have a bit too much copper sulfate in here. Take your copper sulfate, add it in there. See, it's precipitating out very nicely. A very, very insoluble solution of copper hydroxide. There it is. Notice the, the difference in clarity. This is a very infectious blue. Okay, now I just want to filter my remaining excess copper sulfate out. And that kind of will go right inside my cup. And I'll just pour away. It's mostly clear color, and it actually is more of a um, suspension of copper hydroxide that causes it to look blue. I mean, of course, there's some uh, copper sulfate in there that is naturally blue, but a lot more of the color comes naturally from the, uh, or comes from the, um, the suspension of copper hydroxide crystals. If you'll notice, here is a solution of copper sulfate. It's very clear, blue, turquoise, and then here's the suspension of copper hydroxide. It's a similar blue, but darker and uh, very opaque. filter is totally clear. That demonstrates the fact that this is indeed a suspension rather than a uh, solution. So what that shows me is that I had a, a very large excess of sodium hydroxide, which I know I did, um, because this is probably still very basic because it has not neutralized all of the, or rather all of the uh, copper sulfite was neutralized and the uh, hydroxide was not. So that's not just water there, that's probably slightly hydroxide. I am going to recover the sodium hydroxide, but I'm not going to put it back in the same container because it's a different concentration right now. I'm probably just going to use it to neutralize something. Here's some of the very impure crystals that got formed by that process. You can see amongst them there are some greener tones. So now I'm going to take a little bit of hydrochloric acid and dip that on, and drip that on there so you can see the formation of those copper chlorides. Um, those oh so pretty greens. Do you know what a stupid mistake is? A stupid mistake is where you grab sodium hyperchlorate instead of hydrochloric acid. That's a stupid mistake. But here I've got some uh, hydro some real hydrochloric acid. Now I just filled it out. I spilled a little bit on the ground. Yeah, that's the real stuff. Um, the reason it reacts with concrete is because concrete contains calcium hydroxide, which is a very light base, which again, bases react with acids. Um, the end result is calcium chloride and a variety of other artifacts. Anyway, here's what the reaction should actually look like. 
Yeah, there we go. There's some green. That's what we were looking for. Although I do... I would say that looks more yellow, and I think that's because I added some hyperchlorite before. This should look much, much more green when you make this stuff at your house. <laughs> if you were to do such a ridiculous thing. But there we are. A very vivid demonstration of um, the reaction taking place between copper hydroxide being dissolved into copper chloride. <laughs>